most, uh, one of the more common things they get asked to talk about is trig. And so I want to talk about uh, the unit circle and some of the trig functions that we talk about. I'm going to focus on sine and cosine today. And what I want to talk about is w in geometry, we tend to think of things in terms of, at least our sine and cosine and tangent, in terms of circles or in terms of triangles. We have our SOHCAHTOA. We uh, solve stuff, problems with right triangles with our trig. And so what I want to talk about is, OK, what does that have to do with a circle? How does the circle tie into this? And why all of a sudden when we get to pre-calc do we talk about circles? So here is our circle. And I want to start with a radian. is a distance. When we think radian, what we should think is uh, basically walking around the circle. Walking around the circle. So that means that we want to uh, Starting at zero, we're walking around this arc, and we want to, let's say we stop here, and we're trying to measure how far that distance is. Now let's see how we would do that. So what we're, our goal, what we're looking to work with here is figuring out if we're walking around the circle, what is that distance? And so we're looking for the distance around the circle. That has a name. It's circumference. So to recap, we're looking at our distance walking around the circle. We decided that to measure that, we can use circumference. So the distance all the way around the circle would be 2 pi r. So if we're in a unit circle, then 2 pi times our radius would be 1 would just be 2 pi. So that means that all the way around the circle is 2 pi, which is uh, something that you talked about over and over again, is that every cycle that we go around the circle is 2 pi radians. And that's why, because it's based off of circumference and the circumference formula. Halfway around would be pi. But let's go back to this picture. And Let's talk about what we can use and the measurements that we can look at. So we stopped at this point. And we can figure out, OK, how can we get from the center of the circle to that point? Well, there are two different things we can measure. We can measure the, uh, we can measure the height this vertical distance, and we can also measure uh, the length along the x-axis. And when we do that, that height is going to become, eventually, is going to become sine of theta. And the horizontal length is going to become cosine of theta. Why triangles? 
Where do triangles come in? Well, we have two of the sides of a triangle. Let's talk about where the third side comes from. So let's go back to our geometry. And remember how that works. We have, uh, we have an angle, which we'll call theta. And we had an opposite, we had an adjacent, and we had a hypotenuse. And we came up with this SOHCAHTOA. to remember which trig ratio went with uh, which length. Sine was opposite over hypotenuse, cosine was adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent was opposite over adjacent. What if we scaled this so that our hypotenuse was always 1? We scaled this triangle down so that the hypotenuse was always 1. So here's our angle theta. That still stays the same. And we want this hypotenuse to be 1. How do we do that? H by to get 1, it would be H. So scale this down to 1, we're going to divide. Across. And what we're left with is we have 1, h over h is 1. Then over here we have a over h. And over here we have o over h. a over h is cosine of theta. We got that from our SOHCAHTOA. O over h is sine of theta. And so now we want to start to ask ourselves, what is, how can I make sure that my triangle has a hypotenuse of 1? So I draw my, I've got my uh, horizontal and my vertical that's perpendicular. And then I always want the hypotenuse to be 1. So I need something that can control a distance that no matter where I am, if I start from a point, kind of focal point, a center, I keep the same distance of one from that center. Here's where the circle comes in. Because the definition of a circle is that you got a center and a radius that fixes a distance from that center. And so this is, this distance is always guaranteed to be 1. That's why we use a unit circle. Go back one step. I actually want to point out something else that happened over here. Is that I can use, right triangle, I can use Pythagorean theorem over here and say that 1 squared, the hypotenuse squared, equals the sum of the squares of the legs. In other words, does that look familiar? It should. Uh, in fact, when uh, if you're in your book or in your notes, uh, these are usually called the Pythagorean identities. That's why they're called the Pythagorean identities, because they come from the Pythagorean theorem. This is where we get sine squared and cosine squared being 1. And this is also where we get this idea of the unit circle, is that the unit circle can control, no matter where I am, 
I can guarantee that my hypotenuse is 1. So I can start to have all these different triangles. And in all these different triangles, you probably end up drawing this circle one or two times, or two or three times on your paper, because you want me to do a bunch of different things with it as we go. Right? Or I can draw the triangle over here. But in all these triangles, that hypotenuse is going to be 1 because we're starting from the center and then going out our radius distance, which is 1. That's where our unit circle comes from. It scales it down to 1. So now we might start to ask ourselves, now the question we might start to ask is, well, how can we get uh, an idea? The hypotenuse is always 1. How can we get an idea of what the opposite and adjacent are? Or in other words, how can we get an idea of the vertical and horizontal distance? So as my triangle changes, as I walk around the circle, how do my vertical height change? How does my vertical height change? And how does my horizontal distance change? So the first one I want to look at is uh, the vertical height. The vertical height, it starts by being really small as I go around. And then it starts to get a little bit bigger. Remember, the vertical height is sine. So we're talking about sine here. As I go around, it starts to get a little bit bigger, a little bit taller. It hits, it hits its biggest height at, uh, at the peak here. And then it starts to come down. Vertical height is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Then when I start to hit here and go over here, what is going to happen? What's that vertical height going to do? It's going to start getting bigger, but this time the opposite way down. And so we consider that height going down in the opposite direction. That's going to be negative. Right? So we have, uh, then it starts to get more and more negative. It hits its peak down there and then comes back and starts to inch closer to zero. And then it repeats on that cycle. That's how we get this, uh, we call it the periodic function, height change as we work our way around the circle. So starting at zero, it's it taller, then it comes back down, then it dips below. And this is tracking, the x-axis is tracking as I walk around the circle as I make those cycles walking around the circle. And then I can do the same thing for cosine, where I can track the horizontal distance. Right now it's negative, and now it's going positive and getting bigger and coming back. So what cosine is going to do is it's going to start at my largest distance, because it's all the way to the right, and then it comes back to 0, Gets farther to the left, comes back down to zero, goes all the way to the right, repeats. So that's how we get our graph of sine and our graph of cosine. So we start to look at the fact that uh, because of that vertical and horizontal change, uh, we can start to track where things are going to be close to 0, close to 1, positive, negative. So we might start to say, let's start to track sign.
vertical distance. Vertical distance. Where's our vertical distance? Positive. Because that's where sine is going to be positive. Which quadrants is that going to happen? It's going to be in 1 and 2. Right? Here's where our vertical distances are positive. So quadrants 1 and 2. And they're negative. They're below in 3 and 4. Then when we have cosine, and I'll give you a minute to track where cosine is. Remember, cosine is measuring the horizontal change. So when is that horizontal length positive and where is it negative? Where's cosine positive? One and four. We are negative two and three. Over here, our horizontal distance is negative. So cosine, the horizontal distance, is positive in quadrants one and four. It's negative in quadrants two and three. And I have a uh, mnemonic, a memory trick for you to remember where these are. I do not know if you've been shown this before. I know that they show it some years. Uh, this is all students take calculus. This is your trick to remember where things are positive. All, they're all positive in the first quadrant. All the measurements are positive. S for sine. So sine is positive here. Cosine and tangent are negative. T for tangent. Tangent's positive in the third quadrant. The rest are negative. C for cosine. Cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. And sine and tangent are negative. So all students take calculus. And this can help you remember where sine, cosine, and tangent are positive or negative. Because really, the trick to doing these, doing a lot of unit circle, especially in the later quadrants, is remembering, OK, is it positive or negative here? And so this can be a little memory trick to help you with that.